So if you've been watching my prior videos, you'll know we've been experimenting with these inexpensive sensors for detecting flow in ephemeral washes. We encase these in PVC in our field deployments to provide some protection. Because these don't hold up to the elements very well, one of my colleagues started using these DuPont headers to facilitate quick sensor replacement in the field. This is essentially what the hardware looks like prior to field deployment, with PVC providing some degree of protection for the sensor and header, which can easily be disassembled for servicing. This setup does work, but it could also use some improvements, as you'll see shortly. Okay, so here's the sensor. You can see that it was submerged. There's some dirt on it. Um, this one actually triggered the auto sampler and then the auto sampler um, gave up after 12 tries. Um, it was just sucking air. I've already taken this apart and, the, uh, and there is moisture in the tube. So it was attempting to pull some sample. I think the issue is, is that I don't have enough of an elevation difference between the sensor and the inlet tubing. So what's going on here is the sensor's getting wet, but I don't have enough of a head over that inlet tubing, and it might be sucking air um, as a result. Or maybe it pulled up back here and then went around, and this just didn't wasn't getting any moisture. Another possibility is that we had a flow event that resulted in the sensor triggering the auto sampler. But it's possible that this was a flashy event that didn't give the auto sampler enough time to pull a full suite of samples, or even one sample for that matter. One way to minimize that possibility is to lower the elevation of the intake relative to the sensor so that a deeper flow is needed to trigger the auto sampler. This can be done by either lowering the inlet or raising the elevation of the sensor. At the same time, increasing the elevation of the sensor can literally set a higher bar for pulling a sample, thus diminishing the probability of a sample being collected. Yeah, and I'm going to have to come up with a better design for, um, uh, for these field deployments because this is just susceptible to corroding itself, which could result in uh, wasted trips when we come out here. There's got to be a better way to hook up these little sensors in a, in a waterproof way that uh, isn't subject to corrosion. This isn't, this isn't going to work over the long haul. Here's a new sensor we brought down. This is the nice thing about these little cheap sensors from China is they give you an indicator light showing that the, uh, that the sensor is getting power. So this will work. Uh, the problem is these little DuPont headers. These things are not going to hold up to the elements very well. Um, I, I had to really twist this thing to get, uh, to get a closed circuit on that light. So I'm going to have to come up with something better for that. Okay, so there the sampler inlet is lower than the, than the tube. Uh, it would be nice if we could even get it a little bit lower. I put it on some rocks to, uh, so that it's not sucking up dirt. And uh, I've confirmed that the light is on. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. You can see a red tinge right there. That's the light. After I put this whole thing together, you can still see that that's, that that's functional. And I'm going to leave this the way it is for now. You can see that there was flow here. You can see that the ground is wet, but I'm not going to mess around with this anymore for now until uh, I come out next time. Since these little flow sensors are subject to corrosion and can be difficult to replace, I'd like to experiment with a float sensor to see if we can make things easier to maintain in the field. These floats contain a magnet which triggers a reed switch when water causes the float to approach that switch. When the switch closes, I can register the signal on an Arduino or other microcontroller to send notification of flow over cellular or satellite telemetry. These float sensors can either be mounted on the side of a container or its base depending on whether you purchase a right angle or horizontal design. This is a simple design to house the sensor using parts readily available at your local hardware store. The idea behind this design is to create something durable that can be more easily serviced in the field and whose elevation and position can be quickly adjusted using custom lengths of PVC. And these are all the tools and parts you'll need to put this sensor together.
So we're starting to experiment with the particle boron modems, which work on LTE cellular networks, given that our feather phonas operate on 2G, which is being phased out. We're also moving away from ThingSpeak and migrating to the Adafruit IO platform. Since we're paying close to $800 a year for ThingSpeak, and we can get the same functionality on Adafruit's platform for free, at least for our needs. This is the clip of the code and the wiring for our sensors hooked up to a particle boron. Migrating to a float sensor means we now only have to deal with connecting two wires in the field, with the connection being less complicated. But note that we're missing a third wire for registering a signal since this is an on-off switch coming off the float sensor. In order to remedy this, our REMS already host a small protoboard onto which we can attach a signal wire to pin A0 which is monitoring the state of the float switch as shown in this diagram. Note that the signal wire in this diagram is pulled low to ground via 10 kilo ohm resistor, but when a flow event closes the float switch, the signal on that wire will be pulled high. Our code is continuously monitoring the state of that switch and enters a conditional should the signal on the switch increase in response to its closing. To see if this circuit and approach will work, here's a simple sketch that I can upload to an Adafruit Trinket to test it out. And this is the setup for that test. And here's a closer view of the wiring. Here, you can see that there are two leads from the float switch with one pulled low via a 10 kilo ohm resistor. As a result, the white signal wire tied to pin zero in this case is also pulled low. When the float closes the switch, pin zero gets pulled high, and my code tells the trinket to set pin one high, which is tied to a red LED. Let's see if the code and wiring works. So here's where I'm going to add that extra circuitry I just demonstrated. This will be added to one of the remote environmental monitors covered in a prior chapter of this playlist. And here's that completed circuit. Let's see if I can get my new float sensor and circuit to post data to an Adafruit IO dashboard and also send me a text via webhook integration available from within the Particle IO ecosystem. Okay folks, so um, gone ahead and set up the uh, uh, the boron with a sketch that is pulling the state of that switch every 30 seconds and posting data to the Adafruit IO platform. I've got an ADEQ alum dashboard as you can see here. Um, when I pour some water and I get that float to uh, trigger the switch, I should get a text on my cell phone and I should see a green indicator light come on on the Adafruit IO um, dashboard. Let's see what happens. So depending on when that uh, switch triggered, it could take a few seconds. And you can see that a light just came on on the boron. Looks like I'm getting notified of a text. And the dashboard light turned green on Adafruit. So the system is working. In a future video, I'll have footage of this new sensor deployed in the field configured with a particle boron modem. I'll also share details on how to set up an Adafruit IO dashboard to receive data from that modem, and I'll explain a sketch for posting data from a boron modem to that dashboard. Finally, I'll explain how to set up a webhook from within the particle integrated development environment so that you can send a text to your cell phone in response to a flow event detected by your boron modem, all without having to rely on an expensive subscription to ThingSpeak. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and subscribe for updates.